A regularly scheduled meeting of the Marquette Township Board. It's Tuesday, December 20th, 2022, and we're going to stand and say the pledge. It's 632. I pledge allegiance to the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Okay. Roll call, Randy, please. Trustee Kidda? Here. Trustee Winslow? Present. Trustee Everson? Here. Trustee Marks? Present. Treasurer Johnson? Here. Clerk Retire is here and Supervisor Duran? Here. Staff present is Manager Kangas and Attorney Zappa. And our Fire Chief, Dan Shanahan, is here. I don't see any committee members as of yet. Okay, so. Lenny on Zoom. Oh, and Lenny's on Zoom, so. Great. Thank you. Um, do we have any emails? We do not. Comments? We do not. Anybody wish to address the board before we get started? Anything you want to talk about or? Okay. Okay. Sounds good. All right. First up is a public hearing. <coughs> Pardon me. Consider Public Act 425 agreement with the City of Marquette for Longyear property. At 6.33, I will open the public hearing and ask if anybody would like to comment. Are there any comments on the public hearing, 425 agreement? Second time, are there any comments from the public on the 425 agreement with the City of Marquette? Third time, are there any comments regarding the Public Act 425 agreement with the City of Marquette? Okay, 633, the public hearing is closed. All right, so we need approval of the consent agenda tonight. That consists of regular meeting minutes of December 6, 2022. We have bills payable in the amount of $176,030.49. We have the Sheriff's Department quite a few reports, August through November of this year. I also added in um, a little article on protecting Michigan forests. I thought was pretty interesting how much uh, is privately owned and how much is the city and state, or the state and federal, pardon me, um, and what we need to do to protect them. We also have a couple schedules from Marquette County Solid Waste Management Authority for 2023. And I did give you their abbreviated packet from, um, t for tomorrow's meeting. And there are some channel changes from Charter Communication. Um, we've got November financial statements from 2022, and we have a budget amendment, so we will need a uh, roll call on that. If Randy, if you want to read that. Okay, so um, I'll move to accept the consent agenda as presented first. Support. Motion and support. And I'll, then, oh. Yeah, go ahead, sorry. And then uh, the budget amendment, which is um, let's see here. It's one of the last days of the year, but unfortunately, I think we're going to have one more, so we might have to schedule a public meeting to finish that one, but I'm not quite sure as of yet, but take care of that if that happens. So budget amendment 12, or uh, 2022, and that's 08. Authorization is requested to adjust the revenue and expenditures in the various funds. In the general fund, expenditures are increased due to the vacation payouts, automatic handicap accessible door opener, and the new lawn mower purchase. Fire fund shows a decrease in revenue with the, the taxes. The liquor law enforcement fund revenue and expenditure re increased increases are based on actual payments from the state of Michigan. The waste wonder, wastewater fund expenditure increases are in the sewer system. <laughs> and customer accounts due to the vacation payouts and bonuses in, and in the garage, which is repair and maintenance. Water fund revenue increase in the sales from the utility payments, expenditures are increased from the vacation payouts and the bonuses. And the solid waste fund has increases in revenue due to the year end and vacation payout and bonuses, probably be the decreases. If I may just add real quick to that for the board's information, the majority of these 
amendments are a result of contract negotiations that were finalized after the budget was approved and um, we didn't know whether or not we would need to make these amendments until year end because a lot of them are so close to budget amount anyway. Um, go ahead, Randy. Okay, Clerk Retire is yes. Trustee Marks? Yes. Trustee Kidda? Yes. Trustee Winslow? Yes. Trustee Everson? Yes. Treasurer Johnson? Yes. And Supervisor Duran? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. Okay. We need the remainder of the agenda approved unless there are any changes to be made. I'm not aware of any conflicts of interest that apply tonight. We'll make that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay, no board education tonight. Community linkage? Anybody hearing anything from the public? Any phone calls, emails? Linda? I continue to hear um, people wishing that we had a glass recycling container within our township. Not, not that we don't, but it's far out. So I continue to hear that. And I was fortunate enough to come up Vandenboom tonight, and the light show is beautiful, but there were people walking in the road. There are cars on both sides of the road. It is very dangerous. So again, we need to get to the county and get some signs posted to not let them park on one side. Okay. Anything else, Dan? You know, speaking of the county, would uh, we've got to get a hold of them real soon, have them get some sand on these roads. I've had a lot of people come up to me and said, what do we have to do to, to get sand? I mean, the intersections are sheer ice. I know we're going to get a bunch more snow, but it's still going to be ice underneath. So if we can get you to, or somebody to maybe make a phone call and see what can be done. It's treacherous. John, do you want to, or do you want me to? I can, I can get a hold of them in the morning. Okay, thank you. I'm guessing you've tapped Trowbridge, right? Pardon me? Just Trowbridge is where you're seeing That's it? That's where I've mostly. been, yeah, the people have been talking to me, and, you know, like basically Ontario, Werner, those intersections down <coughs> Ontario, Fair Avenue. Werner and Ontario. Hilly bad, intersections, bad, curves of either kind. Pardon me? Hilly intersections and curves of any kind. Yeah. Icy roads. And remember, our next meeting is going to be January 4th. It's Wednesday night, 5.30. So our schedule, I just want to keep putting that out there. Don't show up Tuesday night because you won't vote on anything. So Wednesdays from now on, at least until we change it, at 5.30. There will be a schedule posted also on the door um, after this meeting. I think we need an email, too. For some of us, that too. I can do that. <laughs> I'll do it Tuesday. <laughs> well, you won't be late. <laughs> I won't be late, no. Okay. Let's get into the policy part of the agenda. Consider fire department on call fire, fire, firefighter Andre Brown. This is um, probably, well, yeah, will be the last um, recommendation from me and the fire chief for this year and we will get a new agenda a new um, roster next year on our first meeting updating everything of, of what our fire department looks like um, but i'm making the recommendation of the fire chief and to hire andre brown as probationary firefighter dan did you want to talk or okay does anybody have any questions i gave you just a little bit of background there that i had gotten U.S. Forest Service as a firefighter in Colorado, graduated from Northern. Um, he will attend the State of Michigan Fire School this winter if, he's, if his board approves, and he would be our probation, another pro probationary firefighter. I'll support your recommendation. Or any okay? Any comments, questions? Anything for Dan? I have a, uh, sure. So this is the third person we've approved in the last couple months. So are we having people leaving the service, or are we growing, or do we have people on leave? There's there's a few people on leave. Um, 
probably know a few of them, and I'm anticipating some being on leave soon. Um, and yeah, we're going to grow. You know, we're getting busier. We're almost maxed out, and possibly some people will leave. But you know, right now, it is increasing our staff. So the goal is to have 31 active people. That's why. Just so people don't think we're just growing bigger. Oh no, 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 no. We have we do have a maximum, okay. which is 35, and we're currently at 30 with this hire. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Then I have some more recommendations. This was my biggest year in quite a while of having to fill a lot of spots. Fortunately, many of uh, the, our committee members are reappointments, so that's even better. Um, I guess for those in you know watching by YouTube, I can just reappoint quickly Jim Johnson to the Planning Commission, Dennis Ferraro to the Planning Commission, Tom Fury for the Rec Committee, Frank Stabile for the Downtown Development Authority, Jim Johnson, Zoning Board of Appeals, and as a Planning Commission liaison for that, that committee. William Truscott for the Zoning Board of Appeals. James Becker for the Zoning Board of Appeals as alternate. Mike Springer is the alternate for the Iron Ore Heritage Recreation Authority. Kelly Hillier Genshaw, Board of Review. And Mickey Truscott, Board of Review. So I also have one more position open for the Board of Review. It would be from January 1st, 23, for a two-year term, so 2023 and 2024. Um, in fact, it says in here 23, and that's a mistake. It's 23 and 24. Um, we're kind of looking for someone that might have some building experience. It rounds out the, the um, order of view pretty well. We have real estate and um, banking right now that's kind of um, the experience level and some kind of construction or building type person would be great to to give the residents when they come in a nice well-rounded um, experience level for that group and then tonight I would like to appoint Pete LaRue to the Road Committee with a two-year term three-year term pardon me Carl Kidda as a board liaison to the Road Committee which would be a two-year term until the election in 2024. Christy McBride to the Recreation Committee with a three-year term, and Brent Graves to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a three-year term. So we do have a couple of our people in the audience. If, if you'd like to come up and just say hi, it doesn't matter who or when. Just kind of show your face. You might be working with some of us. I'm Christy McBride. Uh, we just moved to the township two years ago and have two little boys, so I'm excited to be on the Rec Committee and to increase the opportunities for recreation for our family and everyone else in the township. Excellent. Thanks for joining us. We appreciate it. Anybody else? Yep. <laughs> I'm, uh, I'm Brent Graves, and uh, my, my biggest qualification is I'm Christie's next door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, but anyway, uh, we, we were at a meeting a month or two ago, and I just thought that one of the things that's most annoying is folks who complain but never do anything. And so I thought, well, there are openings, and I, I like to help out and, and decide to volunteer. That's great. We sure appreciate it. Welcome. Um, the only other position we have open then is the Downtown Development Authority. And you really have to look at the map, but you can kind of guess it's in this corridor area and a little bit up past the township office, down the corridor. Uh, you would have to live or have interest in that area in order to fill that seat on the Downtown Development Authority. That's a two-year term. So if anybody's interested in Board of Review or the DDA, call us, call the office, fill out an app online, whatever. We'll get some information to you and see if you might be interested in doing that. So my motion is to make all of those appointments. I'll support it. I have a question. Okay. On the Board of Review, isn't there some change in the state statute? They have to have some kind of a class or something before they start? Yeah. Yep, they have to do training, um, and they can be done online now. At Michigan Townships Association has a lot of those classes okay. online. Uh, they are live. You'd have to do them live so that they can record that you're in. And um, you do get a certificate, 
and the one class is for two years. So you only have to you don't have to do it like the next day or something. You've got two years to do it. But there is a huge book, and there is some training that's that's uh, that's a state board. So there's a lot to be learned about that one. But thank you for mentioning that. Did somebody else say they have their hand up? One of you guys? No. For this motion, I have to take a break. The camera system is a, is an issue. Acting out. Okay. Um, so we have motion and support. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. And thank you to all of our all of our committee members. We appreciate you. Okay, so we're doing a timeout here. <laughs> Technology is great when it works. We're good, Lynn. We can go. Okay. Give me a chance to correct the meeting. Okay. So, next up is a schedule a special meeting to discuss township events. When we were doing the budget work sessions, there was quite a bit of discussion on how we see the events that we sponsor and work with um, during the year evolving into next year. We've got the um, Christmas tree lighting, of course, what we, we just did. And in June is the car show that takes place at the mall. And uh, August is our community day in uh, Lions Field. So if you wouldn't mind meeting sometime in January. I think that's good. At least an hour, it might even take two hours to see what we want to do or not do, how we want to change them. John did leave the, we did already approve the budget, but that 12,500 is still in there. So we can do what we want with that. We can put it somewhere else or we can support a, a, an event as it comes in or whatever we want to do. So if you look at, um, I'm assuming you all have your Wednesday meetings in your calendars already. What's your schedule like, um, Randy? So I'm just out of town the, the first weekend of January. Weekend? We, yeah, the first. from Wednesday to Wednesday. Okay. So third week or any time after that Wednesday and the second week. So sometime like at the week of the 16th? Mm -hmm. That'd be fine. That would work. If we do it on Monday or Tuesday. Okay. Now, we've got a new, another one that works. Carl, what is your schedule like? Mine's, mine's pretty open on the week of the 15th, 16th. Okay. Um, do we want something like 3 o'clock? Does that work? Or do you want to do an evening one? 16th or? of January, how's that look? Monday or Tuesday? Any time on that week. 3 o'clock? How does that work? Randy? Monday? 3.30 be better. 3.30. You want Monday? It's Martin Luther King Day. Okay. Okay. 3.30, Monday, January 16th. I'll move to, events. So I'll move to uh, schedule a special meeting on Monday the 16th of January 2023 at 3.30 for the purpose of discussing township events. I'll support that. Okay. Questions, comments? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. That's one out of the way. Okay, we had a request from um, a board member to consider um, creating a township police department that was discussed a bunch of years ago. And um, The idea was to discuss it again, get some information, current pricing, 
Um, so it was suggested by another person that maybe we just have an ad hoc committee with um, their task to kind of do all the legwork and then bring the information back because a lot of it's going to depend on cost um, besides availability what I'm hearing is it's hard enough to to staff the current um, police and and um, sheriff's departments as it is without trying to find more people but um, so that's the proposal that we can we um, set up an ad hoc committee or whatever you want this is just a recommendation All right. if you want the full board to do it that's fine so whatever you think if you don't want to do anything we'll go to the next one I think the biggest thing is, is cost and that uh, I was on the board when we talked about it last time and when it came down to cost we could not compete with what we had as far as cost wise and the service that we got and have it within the township itself and that so it was, so whatever the committee is I think they're going to find out once they look at the run the numbers and the availability of people for to fill the positions it's going to be very very difficult for the township to move in that direction it may be a good time to, to take another look at it but I just feel that I don't think it's there I think the cost is going to be too high for the township to move on their own at this point in time so I don't know that's my feeling okay John I have no uh, problem with supporting adding additional sheriffs to help us out if we have a need for it but I I, I agree with uh, trustee or I agree that there isn't a need at this time that I can see that wouldn't be way out of cost for the township and so uh, I if if people want to serve on a committee to find that out that's okay I, I don't want to serve it would be bad I in fact that I, I suggest I not serve because I'm so opposed to having that. Okay. what else anybody John I think uh, Treasurer Johnson uh, Treasurer Johnson um, hit on what I was going to say but brief conversation I had with the city manager before this meeting is staffing even if we choose to go down that route can we find the bodies without stealing them from the neighboring agencies that we're already relying on to create our own department so that's probably the biggest factor along with the escalation escalation of costs to operate such a department within our organization um, we all know everything's going up in cost significantly uh, that's not to say we shouldn't look at it again we know it's been looked at before we can freshen up the numbers uh, we have a pretty good example of a township police agency in Chocolate Township but I think they're having the same staffing issues that the city and the sheriff's department are having. Um, it's kind of a revolving door of people chasing the best deal that's available right now. So everyone's stealing each other's employees because there's no other um, bucket of staff to pull them out of. Okay, so, so here, here's, the, here's what I see. We talked about the cost of our own police department we, we didn't really talk about stealing employees we didn't really talk about what other things look like we didn't really talk about who was on and why it didn't work last time I think I think we want to look at the numbers and see what the numbers are and then you drive your decision I too Ernie was on that group before um, but I, I think you have to take the numbers first and then decide and if everybody said we're not going to do it because there's no staff people wouldn't um, do a lot of the things that they do today we wouldn't build the hotels we wouldn't um, have another restaurant come into town if we said that oh we're not going to do it or we did it before and I've said that too we did it before it didn't work well that doesn't mean we shouldn't look at it again and so we're really looking at the cost 
of a police department for an individual township. Is, is that, I, I have to look toward the person who really wanted to look at that. Um, you know, it's really just running numbers. I agree, I think if we don't run the numbers, we don't know. So I was the one that, that wanted to, I'll be the first one to go on, an ad, and I think an ad hoc committee is, is all we need for it. Run the numbers, see what we got, and go from there. Yeah, so the committee wouldn't really have to form if that's all we're looking for then, it's just numbers, we could get that from, staff could put that together. Why not have an ad hoc committee? What's, what's the difference? Well, I don't care, I'm just saying if that's all we're looking for. I mean, for, if we got, do we have anybody else that would, would want to sit on it? Linda? Sure, I'll, I'll help you look at the numbers, yeah. And you don't even have to meet in person. You know, you really can put it all together and then look at it and then come together one time. Right. The numbers are going to tell you what it is. Oh, exactly. Okay. Ernie? The other thing, not only the numbers, you have to look at the personnel, what's been available within the market county, what kind of problems all the agencies are having at this point in time to fill the positions. What do they have to go through? Now, if they can't fill their positions, I don't care what the numbers are, it doesn't make any difference. You can pay anything you want, because all you're doing is you're robbing Paul to pay Peter, and then it's going to go all the way down the line. So, the Ad Hoc County Committee is fine to look at numbers, but rather than the numbers, you also look at availability of personnel, what kind of problems you're going to have immediately and into the future to fill those positions that you're talking about in that. You also have to look at where they're going to be located within the township too. So there's a lot of other things underneath the dollar amounts that you have to look at too. So I don't want to be on the committee because I can just see and I've seen too much from the last time and I've watched the costs accelerate within the township for our two officers and our costs for our equipment and that. It's not gonna get any cheaper. It's just gonna go up because you're gonna have you're gonna have at least three, possibly even four positions you're gonna have to talk, either four or part time. And it's not gonna be cheap and that. And the way things are going now in the economy is that the best thing is try to ride run partnerships with other municipalities or other departments to try and alleviate the, the cost factors that you have. You can't do it by yourself anymore. It's just the way it is. You look at our fire department and mutual agreements are having all the way across the park and it's going to get worse, a lot more, because of the cost of the equipment. Municipalities cannot afford to buy all that stuff themselves. So that because it's just too much. You have to have the partnerships all the way along the line to do that. Otherwise, you're not going to make it. You just can't afford it anymore. So that's, I've said enough now. John? I think th there's one more uh, point I'd like to make, and that's that I'd like to know what the rationale is that justifies the need to look at this. What is it that we don't have available with the service we have that is needed that would justify the creation of a police department? So until you come up with some justification for that, why go through the throws of using staff to come up with all kinds of numbers that we now know pretty much from those who have had experience that it isn't going to be there when you look at it. So I guess back in 1978 when we started our own fire department we shouldn't have looked at starting our own fire department. We should have just kept contracting out with the city, right? It's worth looking into. That's all I'm saying. It's not going to cost us anything to look into it. It's not going to change anything just to look into it. 
It is going to cost us something because you're using staff time. What staff? Who's going to run the numbers? Linda and I can run the numbers. Where are you going to get the numbers from? Other municipalities. Okay, that's fine. How can we get the numbers ourselves if we don't get numbers from other mun municipalities? Ishpermine Township has got one police officer. I don't think we can run on one, I think two. But let's start somewhere. There's, I'm not saying there's anything wrong with what, what uh, Sheriff Zybert and the, the deputies at Marquette County are doing for us. But is there a way to save money? I don't know. I wasn't, I didn't have the, the privilege of sitting on the committee last time when you looked at it. You keep saying it costs more, but you don't have any figures. I can't go back in time because I don't well, have those figures. Back in time wouldn't matter because that was so long ago. We need current figures. But at the time, that was the main crunch of everything was the cost factors and that at that point and in time. It may, so. it may come down to that, but it's at least worth looking into. I don't have any problem with that. The committee wants to serve on it. That's fine. Well, I can tell you right now that November's law enforcement, let's see, year to date, 155000 so far through November. So we'll add another 17000 or something for December. Last year we spent 173, and that doesn't count the car. So that ranges 40, 50,000. We saved three years to put the car together. Um, and we know when the sheriff was here that when he spoke well, I don't know, a month ago or whatever, um, he rattled off all the things that we get for that 17,000. Besides excellent care, we get all the equipment and all, all the training, and we pay. The um, <coughs> state utilities, they pay all the insurances <coughs> and overtime, and they handle the schedules. They have a place to do the reports, their computers, all that's covered. Um, besides the fact that we don't have any qualms about the service we're getting, I mean, even when I was in the hotel, we had outstanding coverage didn't matter what time of day it was. We had somebody, state police would show up, the city would show up. If, uh, and that's not going to change. Right. We still have the state police out there. We still have other deputies that are on the road out there. If we need be, we got the city, we got northern. We're not short on police in this area. That's not the issue. Okay. So we have Randy? A move to establish an ad hoc committee to discuss establishing a township police department with Trustee Winslow, Trustee Everson on that committee with the purpose of just uh, getting that information, presenting it back to the board. And there's no timetable on it, whenever you get it. Support. Okay, motion and support. John? <laughs> I think it would be wise to uh, ask me to participate on that as well. And just to help with gathering the data um, I think that would be beneficial for the committee to have a lot of that information requested coming from a staff level well, then I'll amend my motion to add manager Kangas along with the two I'm trustees. not trying to step on anyone's toes no, no, here um, thank you I, I think I know most of the parties that have numbers that they'd be willing to share Chocolate Township the city um, it shouldn't be a problem getting the info fairly quickly. Well, this is the reason that the exercise should be done because, again, we know what we pay every year for police services. The committee is going to find out what it would actually cost to do our own. If that number is way above what we're paying now, then we can um, explain to the residents we are saving money. Yeah, and that's great. I mean, we're just gathering information. It's that that's not anything. There's no problem with that, in my opinion. We're just going to gather information, present it to the board, and then, like I said, <coughs> we've said in the past, we can't make decisions without good information. So. Okay. What else? Anything? We've got a motion in support. No. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. 
do. So I assume your your committees will um, you'll you'll post that meeting too for public. It's a public meeting. Just so you know that. Post those meetings is public, correct, Roger? <coughs> only two people I know two people but it'd be okay. nice to have public input too yeah yes okay discuss Marquette County solid waste Marquette County solid waste management authority funding request PFAS processing facility you all got that lengthy document from chairman yell and um, I have been emailing Brad back and forth. I did include you in that loop tonight. I don't know if any of you checked. I know Carl did check the email before you came to the meeting. Um, I asked him to clarify the $2 perpetual care fee because my understanding was they were at the max that the state allows them or requires them in their perpetual fund for closure costs um, and they don't really need to be collecting that money anymore so according to Brad they're still collecting the two dollar care fee in case they slip below that threshold and if they don't use the money then it goes into their capital fund how convenient <laughs> right okay so I asked him tonight to clarify if you Remember your packet that um, that you had from them. There was a document in there that said uh, the tipping fee analysis. So um, the chairman and Brad asked that the east and west groups of municipalities get together at the end of January, January 30th. I think it's five o'clock. I'm not sure. Five or six. It'll be here in the community room for the east side and I don't have that list but it'd be you know Sands, Powell, the city, um, Chocolate, us, um, Gwynn probably, I forget. They split the 19 municipalities into east and west and um, they want to make this presentation. Now the, the uh, tipping fee analysis, like I said tonight, I emailed them and said, I would like to know what the net operation expenses break out to because we know that we're paying $5 per ton for the facility that they built for the recycling. And we know that um, the $6, and maybe I have, don't have this reversed, the $6 was for the extra $3 million that they had to borrow for that. So we're paying $11 for the recycling, single stream. Then we know that the host community fee is for Sands Township. They get a dollar per ton. That's part of their 425 agreement. And I don't know what the HHW allocation is. I don't know what it's for. That's and the household hazardous waste collections. Okay. But I wanted them to explain that 50 cents, what, how that works. And the environmental escrow fund was a quarter a ton. And then again, we're down to the perpetual care. Then they also have a five-year capital fund. So how that ties in to the fund that they would use the perpetual care money for, I don't know. So I asked him that question too. So hopefully we'll have those answers at the January meeting. Um, basically, they're being mandated by the state if they want to have their uh, permit renewed to address PFAS and, they have and five years to do dispense it, it or dispose of it or remove it, they have five years. So the plant is going to be costing $3.8 million to build and they received a $300,000 I think grant from the state and we know that it's going to cost them almost $900,000 a year to run the plant. So the gist of the letter here to all the municipalities is that they're looking for help from the state, but they're also looking for a requalification or a re redetermination or something based on our, uh, the amount of money we have in the county from the residents. It's 50 some thousand dollars. Sorry, I 
should have highlighted that. Anyway, they're looking for different classifications so that they can apply for some more grants. So this is all going to be brought up in the meeting. I told Brad that we were going to, I was going to present it tonight so you had a little background. And if you have questions, we'll get that. Um, tipping fee analysis broken down a little bit more because they're suggesting a $68. They want to do, I think, a 10-year tipping fee breakout so that it's all planned out ahead of time. We're supposed to have another $6 increase in July, I think it is. Not, I shouldn't say, yeah. It's supposed to increase for five years, and I think this is year three or four. And that's that been a two dollar annual increase. They had the extra. That's what it was for COVID lot revenue losses that yes. has since come off. Yes, thank you for that. So I'm not looking for anything here. This is information. I just want to make sure we were kind of you know if you had any questions between now and then, you are all invited. It isn't just for supervisors or managers to come to that January meeting. They'll post it. If we all decide to go, we should probably post it too so everybody knows that we'll all be in the same room. Because it should be a good sized crowd if everybody attends. Attorney? This is all fine and good, but my feeling is we need Eagle there. They're the ones that are mandating it. This is, to me, is an unfunded mandate from the state that we have to do it now. Do I agree with what they're doing? Yes and no. I don't know enough about it. But we have a, we have a state department that's mandating X number of dollars that we have to spend and we have no say on it and I think Eagle needs to be there so we can ask them point blank are you going to fund this because this is another unfunded liability that you're pricing on the municipalities period and that that's my feeling in that so I need Eagle there and I'll tell you right now they're not want to come they don't want to be here at all no part of it but I think we need to start applying pressure to these departments within the state that are putting forth these unfunded mandates to all the municipalities in the state. If they want to do it, that's fine, but then you come up with the dollars to do it. We can only ask our residents X number of times for money and that. Because if you look through here, you could get up to $14 additional monthly charge if you look at all the data, if it comes through as they say. So you look at what we're paying right now, $15, you put another $14 on top of that. I don't want to be on the board if we do that. And I don't think any of you do either because you get that first bill of $30 a month. And I'll tell you right now, this place will be packed and, that, and there'll be nothing that we can do about it. Our hands are tied. It's not only us, it's everyone else in the county. I know, but... It's everyone else in the county, not only us. I know, but what I'm saying is our residents will be here. If, you, if we have to do that. So. And then we tell them it's not from this board. It's from the Solid Waste Board. That we're passing the cost on from the Solid Waste Board. There's where you need to talk to. We've controlled our cost here. It's the solid waste that needs to be talked to. I understand that. But when I go to the grocery stores or go to Target or something like that, or meet someone on the streets or that, you get tired of trying to answer these questions because they're not going to accept the answers. They're going to continue to come after you and that, especially after the bills come on. So, and that's, that's my feeling. That's why we try to educate them as well as we can. It's like a few years ago when that garbage fee went up, we told them it's not from us. It's from the Solid Waste Authority. We're passing their cost on to you because we're not absorbing it. I agree with you. I agree with you. So. But I still think Eagle needs to come and tell us why they don't want to fund it themselves and that. I'll, I'll suggest to them. Anything else on that? John? Can I just say that we are in a unique position at this point in our history in that we've discovered we have a landfill closure fund we don't need to have anymore. Um, that may be this township saving grace and that we already have a bank account that we could use to pay our share of this added cost so think about that 
Yeah, but like Ernie said, you know, even if we did cover it for a year, that next year. I'm talking about the initial investment cost to build the wastewater plant. And let's let's remember we all hate these unfunded mandates. But they can get away with it every time they can tie it to public health. And this is a public health issue because we're talking about PFOS and the leachate that they have to treat before they discharge. So you're not going to get Eagle to back down on this one. It's a public health issue. We are going to be forced to pay our share of it, figuring out what our share is based on historic tonnage might be the challenge. But you could equate the new debt that they have to take on to build this plant by community based on average historical tonnage and figure out what market township's share is. And that's how we pay our share. I don't know how they're going to calculate a separate tipping fee for us as a result and keep it straight, but it shouldn't be that difficult. Just think about that as a potential solution. They did suggest, too, doing a countywide um, millage. <clears throat> I think it was $50 a year, which is not a whole lot, but uh, per household. And then that would, they would adjust the tipping fees down. But, you know, they have so many different tipping fees in place now, I don't know how they can even keep them straight. It's kind of ridiculous. Okay. You good on that? Thank you. Okay. Consider renewal of municipal risk insurance policy liability insurance we just got the last quote in today so obviously you haven't seen all that I'm recommending that this item and the next one be rescheduled to a special meeting prior to year-end the health insurance policy we're also waiting on some new numbers because we have some unique uh, changes part of it because of the Affordable Care Act, part of it because of budget limitations we've imposed. And it is a contract reopener item every year, so um, we want to make sure we have good information and share it with everybody before you have to really make a decision. I will say the municipal risk insurance policy is going to be an interesting discussion. We have three good proposals. There's, there's basically three municipal agencies in the state. There's MRMA, MML, and our current carrier power plan. Um, getting an exact apples to apples quote is pretty difficult on these because they all recommend different coverages for different um, parts of the policy. Um, and they all have different incentives or benefits depending on how you want to look at it, whether it's dividends or grant programs. Um, the lowest cost isn't always necessarily the best way forward. There's also customer service with each agent that needs to be considered. So that could be an interesting conversation and I guess be prepared for it. The health insurance one, we hope we can come back, back to you with a, a simple solution if the numbers work out. So we'd like to do a special meeting for next week that that would work in your schedules so we can try to wrap this up before the end of the year. Like so Thursday maybe? Um, <coughs> I'm busy on Thursday. The Education Foundation is having their event. Okay. Does Wednesday work? Friday? Wednesday's fine. 28th? What's the 28th look? Wednesday the 28th? The time. Just whatever after one o'clock in the afternoon would be good. One o'clock. One thirty. That's okay. That's soon enough for you. Okay. One thirty. Randy's Wednesday the only one that the works shifts. Twenty-eight. 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 Heck, the car will be work too. Well, that's fine. He I said, guess. "Yeah." He said, "Yeah." Working calls. Thank you. Yeah. Is it the twenty-eighth of Saturday? Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. next day. I'm sorry. Where, December. Where are you in? <laughs> 2023 of January. So, okay, so Wednesday. I'll make a motion to schedule a special meeting on Wednesday, the 28th of December at 1.30 p.m. And the two 
subjects will be the renewal of the Michigan risk insurance policy and the renewal of the health insurance policy at 1.30 p.m. in the afternoon here. Will you, will you know at that time if there's another budget amendment? We probably will, so um, I will add um, at that time also, we will include the year-end budget amendment at that time also. It should be done by then. Good thinking, Linda. Support. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? It's nothing like going out with a bang at the year end and that too. So. My apologies, we didn't have this for you sooner. We uh, getting all of these in on, in a timely manner at year end is like pulling teeth with some of these insurance carriers and and maybe, John has maybe not, some of the agents. He has tried and he's looped me in on these emails and phone calls. They're ridiculous. They're absolutely ridiculous. We're trying to get back to them. So three topics on that meeting will be the year and budget amendment, municipal the, the insurance, the municipal insurance policy, and a health insurance renewal. Okay, sounds good. Okay, consider. Did you did you call a question on that? I can't remember. I did didn't I? No, I don't think you did. No. We must be tired. Mm -hmm. Neither one of us remember. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. Thank you. Doesn't hurt to do it twice. Yeah, I circled that we did. Okay, consider proposal for financial audit services. You have one proposal to consider. We requested them from eight separate um, firms. Two respectfully declined. Five did not respond. And we have a proposal to renew our contract with our current audit provider. Um, just like everything else, inflationary costs are reflective in the renewal. I will, I will say though, we have had no issues with our current auditing firm. They've been very helpful. And I think it's important that we have this opportunity to continue with the same firm knowing that key staff has changed in the last couple of years. Yeah, I know we've called them a few times for different things. Kim's help and Dave, they're great. Ernie? Megan, looking at the dollar figures, we went from 9,600 to 70, and we're increased by $7,140. And the comments were there, part of it was because of staff changing within our, in the, so we're talking that big increase because of staff changing and that. I, I know what our accountant did for them last time, so it's quite a jump in that too. So. That number will stabilize again as they get confident with our new staff, but inflationary adjustments are showing up in every new quote we're requesting. I understand that. So it's that's also that part of it. I just looked at the numbers and I looked at the comments that were made there. So. Yeah. Okay. Unfortunately, we have nothing else to compare it to. I would have at least expected one from our local firm that provides auditing services for municipalities, but they did not respond. Andy? I'll move to accept the proposal for, from Gabridge and Company in the amount of 16740 16, for 22, 17200 for 2023. 17,700 for 2024. Support. Support. Anything else? The only question I have is, John, do you know, are they going to do that additional form? Is that included in that proposal? That's, that's an additional fee. Whether or not we need them to do it, I think, remains to be seen because our ARPA reporting is two items right now. Okay. We have a towable hydro excavator and most likely an ambulance and our ARPA money has gone. It's two items. It should be pretty simple. Okay. Just, cool. just, a, just a wonder. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. 
Consider driveway approach repairs. Mr. Kangas. This is the kind of recommendation that makes people like me squirm a little bit. But I think if you look at the history of it, it is unique in that we had a very localized sewer repair done on Fair Avenue that impacted the private driveway approach immediately adjacent to it. That private driveway approach failed prematurely. Um, it's all wavy, which tells me there's pumping action of the subsurface materials there. This is my engineering opinion. I know that's not why you're paying me to do this job, but I can't ignore that part of my experience. We won't know that for sure without actually digging up and looking at it. But we asked the one paving contractor locally that we would trust to do the job right for a proposal. They gave us two options. The first option being the most logical, that's tearing everything out and a couple extra feet, putting in good sand, and then aggregate base and new pavement over the top. That's the expensive option. The more affordable option would be to take the aggregate base and asphalt out, put in a geogrid, which is going to help stabilize those wet subsurface soils and help bridge that gap. It just distributes the load better, more evenly and you won't have that differential movement and then you put the aggregate base and asphalt back on. Um, this would be a cost covered by the wastewater fund because that's what originally caused the problem we believe. Um, my recommendation though would be to verify that subsurface condition before doing any work and our staff could verify that pretty quickly once frost laws come off. Um, Superior Paving said they would honor this quote in this for 2023 construction. Tom? I move to award the driveway approach repair at 1963 Fair Avenue to Superior Paving for the quoted proposed amount of 7,600 to be paid with West Wastewater Fund Reserve. Okay. Support. Support. Bernie? I have two, two questions here. One is I'm looking at 7,600 and I look at the actual uh, cost that they're recommending. They started at 23,800 and looking further down, they're going to deduct 7,600 and we're talking about 7,600. There's a differential of $16,200 here. Uh, that you? would be a typo on my part then. Um, the deduct is 7600 7, so it's actually 23800 minus 7600 Okay. That's fine. The other question is, I'm going to ask the board if I should be voting on this because he's my neighbor across the street and I know him very well. Now I'll have to ask the board if I should be able to, if I should vote on this or not. I think you should. The only question when you do that, Ernie, is do you have any financial interest in this? I don't have any. I okay. just want to let the board know this at this point in time. So if you don't have any financial interest no. in it, then you should vote on it. Okay. The actual cost, if my math is right, is $16,200. My apologies. So it'll be, yeah, so it's 16200 it'll be. And you will verify what needs to That's be That's what done. I came up with. Okay. So I have one well, question. It, it said in the letter that he lets the city turn around in his driveway? Yes, but that's been long before we ever repaired his approach. So we're and not going to have that happen anymore with them? Well, that's the intent of this geogrid is to stabilize that or help dis redistribute the loading so you don't have that differential movement. So what if this happens again in five years? He's going to have to be on his own at that point. So how are we going to make that clear to everyone? Because I see this as a little bit of a door opener. Make it. There's always the concern of establishing a precedent. In this particular case, there was one driveway impacted by this project. Um, and the driveway failed prematurely. 
There's no doubt about it. I think if you ask Supervisor Durant, she was out there with Lenny and I. She received the original complaint about it. It's it's a roller coaster. Um, if you look at Ernie's driveway directly across the road, it's 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 smooth. Um, I can't argue that what the township put back as as the restoration from this sewer repair gave him a better product. It was not an improvement. The remainder of his driveway, which is significantly older, is in better shape. Um, and he didn't have this kind of uh, differential movement happening from heavy trucks turning around in his, in his driveway before our project. I don't have that to prove to you. We have to take his word for it. I think if we... It's not been a problem. I think he said 20 years. Yeah. His original original driveway is 20 years old. Yeah, it's got a little bit of rutting in it, but it's not all wavy like the approaches. Yeah, this is like inches, inches it's of waves. It's not the kind of driveway approach I would want at my house. So did you say yes, they will not be turning around in that driveway again? Or they'll continue to turn around? I think he's okay with them doing it. We, so we you may want to indicate in, in your motion that this will be the last time we, it's we a make one this time repair. Yeah. Repair to the property. Correct. Whoever shows up after and owns the property, we're yep. not fixing it. And, and you know, I, I don't think we can blame the heavy trucks that are turning around there because they've had this mm -hmm. agreement and it's that close to the border with the city, they have to turn around somewhere. Um, they don't look right. Can I interject real quick? Sure, Lenny, go ahead. Yeah, I, I did talk to uh, the, the city because I believe that's who was turning around right there. Uh, they will not be turning around there. I think they're going to go down to the nearest intersection and turn around there from now on. Okay, that's good to know. I'm sure he'll appreciate that too. Do we want to? Okay, Ernie? I brought this up to the neighbor and that because in the mornings I can hear him and that turning around and that so as i can see there are flashing lights and everything else and that so uh, he was trying to do something about it where he went from it i don't know but it's been going on for a while and that too so well just so it's made clear john and you're the motion maker this will be a one time right event. one time right so anything beyond this is not us on us and i i'll prove that amendment So it's a one-time payment of sixteen thousand two hundred dollars to fix that. Anything else? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. Okay. One last thing on that. Yes. The driveway approach is in the public right of way. It is not on private property. Just for the record. Accept Van Overloop donation. Accept. I move to accept the uh, Van Overloop donation and earmark it for the uh, beautification of the Grove Street entrance sign. Support. Motion and support. Comments? Questions? Thank you from the uh, family of Peg Van Overloop for the uh, donation. Very good. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. Okay. We're back to the 425 agreement. Consider the agreement with the city for the long year property. You want to get us up to speed, Mr. Kangas? Sure, and I'm, I will probably hand this off to Attorney Zappa since he did draft the original agreement that has since been edited by, by the city with an additional request from long year to clarify some of, some of the language. but. Ultimately, this agreement allows two pieces of property in two municipalities to be developed as one project with one set of rules, the township's rules, which would be as a PUD that we have not yet seen. Uh, the agreement being approved by both municipalities does not tie anyone's hands on what that PUD ends up being. Uh, we would collect the taxes 
distribute the operating millage to the city after admin fees are deducted. We would provide all of the municipal services, including public water and wastewater. Um, and generally uh, treat the city's portion of this property as if it were in the township, but it would not be. And Attorney Zappa can probably explain that all to you in proper legal terms. Thank you. This is not an, an especially unusual type of agreement, though it might be for Market Township to some extent. But basically, 425 agreements have been around for a number of years to facilitate a good working relationship between two adjoining municipalities. Um, Portage Township, the city of Houghton, for example, have a number of 425 agreements. The concept here is going to be that it will last for 50 years or can be renewed for 100 years at the termination or the expiration of that agreement, um, the land would then revert to the um, city of Marquette because the land is in the city. The question, there have been a number of questions that have been sent my way in the past couple to a few weeks on this. Um, as Manager Kangas indicated, this is by no means a determination of what the PUD, which is a planned unit development project, would look like. Though we have an initial uh, draft proposal from the developer, so what they're proposing is a fairly condensed um, housing group of housing units because we've had a number of presentations and information concerning the housing shortage, especially for the working class folks in this area. So this would be designed to help address that, not solve it, but help address some of those issues. Um, the reason it makes sense, perhaps, in this case is because the area that belongs to the city is within the city's boundaries, really has no practical um, means of connecting to utilities but for through the township's sewer and water system. Um, the developer would extend those systems um, if the developer accepts that cost um, from Marquette Township to the existing portion of this project that is in Marquette Township and then also to those units that would be in the city of Marquette, the two lots or two uh, parcels abut each other. Um, there's a rigid statutory process for adopting a 425 agreement. Uh, the plan you have, um, I believe, contemplates just about every type of scenario that you would see in a 425 agreement. People who ultimately live on the portion of the land that is within the city boundaries would vote in Marquette Township, would pay their taxes here, um, would receive police and fire support from here. The um, payment that would be made by Marquette Township to the city would be basically the operating millage that is actually collected for those parcels as improved because naturally the tax base will go up if the improvements uh, evidence themselves. It would not include the administrative fees because of course the administrative fee is to help compensate for the uh, work involved in collecting those taxes. It would not include special assessments, for example, and I don't know that there are any special assessments existing right now on that, but it's conceivable that some type of assessments might be levied in the future for whether it might be lighting or additional types of utilities that we're not even contemplating. Those would have to be applied to what they're being assessed for. They also would not apply to, uh, the, the payment to the city would not include those taxes that I've referred to as pass-through millages, such as the iron ore heritage uh, recreation millage. Um, it wouldn't apply to our uh, fire department millage or the extra policing millage because we are going to be providing those services to um, this parcel of land that currently has no residents 
on it to require services essentially. Um, so with that, uh, oh, moving forward to the process, a public hearing is required by both entities involved in a 425 agreement. So there's a tandem type of process going on right now in the city of Marquette. Um, this is the night that you had your public hearing. Under the statute, the parcel that is being transferred into or is being proposed to be transferred into the township, um, in theory, they could have um, a referendum could be demanded. That's, uh, without going into tremendous detail, that's extremely unlikely to occur in this case because essentially there aren't any residents there to the best of my knowledge, so there it has to be a certain percentage of residents who file a petition. Nonetheless, there's a statutory procedure that says the uh, 425 agreement can be executed or entered into after the second of the two public hearings. Yours is the first public hearing. The city's um, is, I, I was advised by the city attorney, will be scheduled if it hasn't been already, but uh, very soon. So then once that occurs, if the city would adopt or approve of the 425 agreement, then um, after 30 days, the agreement can actually be executed by the parties. So what your motion would look like if this board is inclined to adopt or approve this 425 agreement would be to authorize the supervisor and the clerk to execute it not sooner than 30 days after the city of Marquette's public hearing. You might also consider making it contingent upon learning whether the city has also approved of or adopted this agreement. Uh, if there are things that, that strike you as, um, as unreasonable or that you have questions about, this would be the time to shoot those at me and I can try to answer the questions on it. Um, similarly, the city of Marquette, the city commission, will be seeing this um, to consider. So there's, it's conceivable that either side, either public body, could make uh, revisions or changes, and that would put us back to a redraft. However, what we attempted to do is we had a meeting going back to July, was the first one I was invited to, to just discuss what a proposed 425 agreement might look like. So this is the best attempt of Marquette Township's staff and myself and staff from the city, which included the city attorney, of trying to reach a brainstorming consensus of what might seem reasonable for all parties. Does that mean this is the perfect solution and that um, we, we've addressed everything possible? Well, I hope it does, but I, I'm not so quite so arrogant as to say it does. So if you've looked at this and you see something else that we should be looking at, um, I'll be happy to try to address those. And also, if you look at it and question, why do we have certain provisions in here? Um, there's undoubtedly a reason for it because there was an awful lot of time and attention. In fact, I think I drafted the initial version of this while I was sitting at home with COVID. So I had plenty of time to, to give that some thought. Randy? So last week when we were here for the recount, I did chat with the city clerk about this. And um, so those residents, if, it, if approved in that 425 agreement, would vote here. That is correct. Okay, so that's okay. We'd have to change the QVF for, well, we, we would work it out. I'd and, let Kyle know. <laughs> and let me also hasten to add that this is different from, for example, an annexation, which you hear about sometimes. This is um, an alternative to an annexation. Uh, we are not taking this into our uh, uh, jurisdiction in that manner. That's a completely different um, process. And in fact, if a 425 agreement is adopted, 
Um, neither party is permitted to consider annexation during this time. And I know I'm talking a lot here, but a couple of other points that um, I would like to bring up is one of the questions that crossed my desk within the last two days was if the board, the township board, adopts this and if the city adopts this, does that take away their ability to determine under Article 13 of your zoning ordinance what this planned unit development project looks like? That, well, this is just too dense or we think you should consider um, taking these measures to preserve recreational features because it is in a semi-recreational area also. And the answer to that is it doesn't impact that at all. In fact, your um, zoning ordinance specifies that in section 13.02 that the planning commission can only consider a PUD plan if it is on property in the township. This is the initial phase assuming that both the city of Marquette and the township approve the plan that brings that land within the jurisdiction of the planning co uh, commission to allow them to exercise their discretion on what a planned unit development project might look like. Um, this project could completely die because of the, the land, the geography, the uh, logistics of implementing it just don't work on this parcel. That is not this board's determination here tonight. It is only the step to allow uh, it to move forward to the next level to determine whether um, a plan that has not even yet been submitted in a formal fashion by the developer to the township is appropriate and suitable and feasible. So th approving this plan does not approve a development plan. There is no development plan specifically other than in a, a very initial preliminary um, diagram essentially that shows Conceptual. what that might look like. A con that, that's the term I was groping for and couldn't come up with. It's a concept of what it might look like but the initial concept even had building units that the boundary between the city and the township split them and it's almost certain that that will be modified uh, so that those type of little nuances can be corrected. Again, this is not taking away any um, authority from the Planning Commission to jump through all of the required hoops of a, uh, of a planned unit development under Section 13.02 of the Zoning Law. Right, easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> I'll move to uh, authorize the supervisor and clerk set, clerk to um, execute the 425 agreement with the City of Marquette contingent on the City of Marquette's approval within 30 days of their approval. Support. And I'll request a roll call vote on that. Okay. Motion and support. Bernie? Me again. Going through, looking through all this and everything. Oh, it's pretty much our 425 we have already have with sands and everything else. It's very similar to that. A couple things I have as far as looking at from the treasurer's perspective. I'm looking at the administrative fees charge, which we're going to receive, but not the actual app, the operating millage we're not going to receive. No, I have a question on that because the fees are not going to cover the costs that we going to occur in the township and that. Randy talked about elections. There's cost to running elections which comes out of the general fund which is funded by all the taxpayers within the within the township. Now we're going to be running the elections and we have to get that dollars from somewhere. The administrative fee is not going to be sufficient to do that period to do any of this and that. So I just want to make the board aware of that yeah. end of it. So we're going to be collecting taxes. The treasurer is going to be billing all the all the residents through the tax and sending the tax distribution out. The only part we're keeping is administrative fees. 
and I'll be very honest with you, it's not going to cover all the costs within the township and that. Regardless of what it is, it's not going to be anywhere near it. Even though, when they're talking about $90 million out there, it still is not going to be sufficient amount to cover all our costs, as the other residents do. So, John. Okay, go ahead, John. Um, we should put this in perspective. We're talking 34 acres, which is about 20% of the total property size. If 20% of this property is, or development is within the city and we don't know what the actual number of units looks like that's on the city parcel that could be 40 homes uh, I'm just using a round number of 200 total based on what we've seen before 40 homes in the city we know the clerk is running the elections already anyway 80 more people on in the QVF for an election that's already happening. That particular example, I'm not specifically concerned about. I will say, the way our tax structure is set up works in this case. I won't, I won't say it's perfect. I agree that some of your concerns are valid. We have, going back to special assessments, we have a special assessment for our fire department operating, correct? Act 33. Yes, we have we have a special millage for law enforcement, right? Right. We'll still maintain that, which will be passed on to the sheriff's department. We will provide water and sewer services, at least for the terms of the agreement. We collect all those fees, so Lenny's department will be covered. Fire department's covered. Law enforcement's covered. Those are our expensive departments. I'm not as concerned about 40 new um, voting members on city property basically acting within our jurisdiction for 50 to 100 years. Roger? If I could expand on that a little bit. I, I'm not, I didn't look at the number of units or the percentage of land tonight as maybe I should have. But keep in mind that right now it's essentially vacant land. So if the manager is correct and it's 75 or 80 percent of the land surface of this project is already in the township, then, then this project very likely or may not happen if the 425 agreement doesn't come to fruition. What that means is 80 percent of that project will be in land that is within Marquette Township's jurisdiction. So that's where your tax base is going to increase to cover the admitted increase in expenses. You will have increased expenses and there's probably expenses we're not even thinking about that will increase. But what um, the the factor to be weighed is the increase in your tax base from the 80% that's already in the township or 75% or whatever that percentage is but that's where the bulk of the project is and again there has to be some type of an incentive for the city as well to, to engage in this and keep in mind that they also have vacant land essentially there so this would be a development for them and they have a higher tax base than this, than the uh, township does so um, you know that was that was something that was discussed at the meetings of can this realistically um, make sense as a project um, I don't have a crystal ball to know that if if, if the, 425 agreement isn't adopted that the developer would pull out but there are economies of scale involved and perhaps there's a reasonably good chance that if it can't happen on the whole parcel that the whole development just dies at least for now okay Randy cost of increases in elections would be minimal I'm there anyway the 80 
say if there's 80 residents, 80 pieces of paper aren't going to cost me much more money because I'm doing it all in bulk. So the, the minimal, it would be very minimal, maybe a few dollars. Hey, I just use an example. The question I come is when the residents see that I have to send the dollars to the city and not retaining here, we have to be prepared to answer the residents at that point in time. So we, and if we've discussed it ahead of time, then they know we're aware of it and we've discussed it and that. So it's not something that we just passed it through. I have no problem with the 425. I think it's great at that. I think it's fantastic in that. But I just want to make sure that we're aware of this if residents start asking questions. That we did discuss it. We are concerned with it. But this is the way it works. We don't have a chance, any way out of it. So, okay. That's All the questions. Okay. Go ahead. Director is yes. Trustee Marks? Yes. Uh, Trustee Kidda? Yes. Trustee Winslow? Yes. Trustee Everson? Yes. Treasurer Johnson? Yes. And Supervisor Durant? Yes. Motion carries 7 0. So as the agreement stands, as we were talking about, we need to, it, nothing takes effect until 30 days after the second public hearing. So if, when the city discusses this on the 9th, and if they pass it, then we wait till whatever, February. It's within the 30 days. No, I, I think it's, can't. 30 days after yeah. the second public hearing. I forget how it's Well, I just so happen to have a copy of the statute here with me, so let's see. <laughs> Not sooner than 30 days, I think it says. Oh, yeah, that's a, that's a paraphrase, actually. The not sooner than 30 days is a valid paraphrase. So it'll be 30 days after the approval. Correct. Okay. okay. So somewhere around, and, and then that, and then what happens? Then it's a it's. It, it gets it, executed it's jointly. To come to having a plan, and then it goes to it. It has to be filed. Okay. And um, there's a process for, for filing it, which is a matter of days. That's not a long, drawn-out procedure. But that's what triggers Longyear to be able to submit the plan. Yes. It was the final okay to go ahead and figure out what they're going to do. That's correct, because right now there is a chicken and an egg question here to some degree. But if um, the plan was submitted before action is taken on the 425 grant, um, plan, <coughs> Longyear or the developer doesn't know whether it should be submitting a plan on that includes this 34-acre parcel in the city or not. And quite frankly, that would dramatically change the nature of the project. And uh, it would be somewhat of a waste of time for them and money for them to just guess whether it might go through or not go through to do that first. So um, that was our consensus, is it makes much more sense to have the 425 plan considered as the initial step. And there's also a provision that if nothing happens, that if A, if the uh, PUD is rejected because it just doesn't work for this parcel, um, or if uh, the developer decides that uh, their fortunes have changed and they don't want to move forward with the project, then this doesn't stay in effect for either 50 years or 100 years with the extension. There's a, an early termination provision uh, in the contract. Yeah, I'm sorry, well, yeah, it, it is a contract in the 425 agreement. So the on the outside, that would be four years um, that it would be in effect, and it could be less than that. There's also a provision in there that it could be much sooner than that if both parties agree that this just, is, just isn't going to come to fruition. So this isn't something that you're acting upon um, that's going to be in effect until 2079, 2279, or whatever year this is, um, 72. It, it, can, it can end long before that if things change. Okay. Are we good? 
Okay, thank you, Roger. That was invaluable for everybody. And I will apologize to the fire department, public works, and the attorney because I put their updates in the wrong part of the agenda. Yeah, I looked at that. Oh, <laughs> I should have. You know, you get that feeling in your stomach that something's not right. I missed it too. Sorry. Oh well, Dan got educated. Come on up, Dan. You needed to know because the 425 would affect you anyway. I could have texted you, but. <laughs> Thank you for your. And I will be very brief. I promise. Um, I'll just i just hit a few highlights of our uh, training last night. Marquette City Firefighter Captain Vogler came in and uh, just taught the whole the whole group of us about uh, smoke and scene size up and new construction. Something a lot of us us older guys needed as well as some of the newer people. Just the way uh, fires are starting quicker and um, burning hotter and faster. It was an excellent class. Uh, emergency spot response, um, EMS mutual aid, only six last month. We did assist on the Gandhi Township with one structure fire. Um, call volume year to date is up 15%. Membership currently is at 33. Um, we are all getting a little bit older. I know it sounds, yeah, a little bit. It does sound like we're expanding quite a bit. Um, which is a good thing. You, I know we were so, everybody was in such a slump, um, but we do seem to be expanding a little bit, but some of us are getting older too. So we're, we're gonna be prepared. We're gonna have some people that are hopefully moving up. Um, uh, meetings are pretty- reports are in there, so. Pardon me? Reports are in the packet too, so. Report, your reports, Dan, are in the back. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, we did receive an email from FEMA today. We were denied on both of our AFG grants. So I will be, the uh, ambulance rep is coming up tomorrow and I don't know what the prices are gonna be now. There I have a good idea. There goes the rest idea. of our ARPA funds. Yep. <laughs> um, Lowe's was very generous and gave us the superhero fund, um, $1,000 um, at their cost shopping spree for the fire department, a lot of tools, stuff like that. And in a nutshell, we've been giving out a lot of and installing quite a few smoke and uh, carbon monoxide detectors to residents. And that's it in a nutshell. And they can just call you, right? They, they can call us at an appointment or they can stop up, in or? and um, yep. yeah, pick them up. No cost. No this cost. Was from a grant, well, correct. they're from the state of Michigan grant, correct? Okay. Yep. Yeah so they know they can do that. Yeah, yep. A little bit of paperwork because they're on a grant, but, yep. And they don't have one-year batteries in them, or No, whatever. they're the you 10. Tell people the, about the 10-year batteries. Yeah, they're, they're 10 years. No no batteries ex, ex, to uh, replace or anything. Yep, you, we put them up, they're good for 10 years. And call us again in 10 years, and we'll install them or we'll give you some, some more, hopefully, as long as this grant stays alive. So those batteries won't end up in the garbage line? Great. Yeah, that too. Yep. Great. Any questions for the chief? Thanks again. All right. Dan. Yep. Thank you. Hey, Merry Christmas. You too. Merry Christmas. You can stay around too. Oh, well, I gotta get. There's a little party going on across the street. Oh. Christmas party. Well, Christmas party for the, the little ones. Oh. So we're gonna go over and say hello to Santa. Okay. Public Works, Lenny. You know, if you see this on the agenda and want us to move it, wave your hands or tell Let us. Let us know. We're not perfect. We do this a lot, but oh, that's fine. Feel free. Um, let's see here, real quick, uh, with uh, wastewater. Uh, uh, some of the work has been completed on our uh, Center Street lift station project. Uh, right now, uh, it's at a standstill, basically for a couple reasons. One is it, it's winter. Uh, the second one is um, we have a very long wait to get our generator. And uh, when it originally uh, the project started, it was at 52 weeks. So we're going to be waiting a while to get the generator there, but um, the project is, I mean, we got some stuff done there, but for now, we'll, we're just going to wait. Uh, we're continuing to investigate some inflow and infiltration issues there on our sewer collection system. Um, this mainly uh, occurs in manholes, although we've had, uh, have seen it in grinder tanks as well. Um, we're currently working on a couple projects to minimize this infiltration. So um, the guys had found a few manholes that were leaking groundwater. Uh, they were able to get it kind of patched up uh, from the outside and the inside. So 
um, that that project kind of slowed down, or is going to slow down here with uh, with the with heavy snows coming. But uh, we'll get right back on it here in the spring, and that kind of helps keep our sewer flows going back that we have to pay for. So we try to keep everything at a minimum that we can, and so that's going to be a project that we're going to be working with going forward. Um, with water, uh, we are as of this writing, we were continuing to wait for the pump number seven to come in, but actually they were there today and they were able to work on it today. Um, I talked to Rob here uh, in early afternoon, they were still working on it. So I'm not really sure if they completed the project uh, today or if they got to come back to do some more work tomorrow. Uh, supply chain issues were kind of holding that project up as well. Uh, one main thing was they, didn't, they couldn't find a, a, a glue pump like the replacement pump. So we had to find the, another supplier to give a comparable pump in there. So uh, again, supply chain issues are really kind of wreaking havoc on uh, things here, but hopefully that pump will be up and running by tomorrow. Uh, we've also been going through our meter program. So we have noticed that uh, some of our meters, especially the big ones, uh, the batteries have been kind of quitting on us. They originally had a 10 month uh, battery life, or not, sorry, 10 year battery life on them. And it seems like what's happening now is that about 10 years and five months are quitting. So uh, we're kind of going through and we're checking. We can see the meters that are starting to drop out. Uh, the reads will come in missing a number. We can go out there and physically read them. All the numbers are there, but eventually the numbers will start dropping off. Uh, so we've kind of been looking at, uh, kind of going back through our records and seeing which meters we believe are gonna be starting to fail. So we're kind of starting a rotation process in some of these meters to kind of keep up on it. Uh, we actually uh, replaced one, we replaced the, the office meter head, I believe it was yesterday. So we had a manager, Kangas, and I actually had a good demonstration of what they do when they uh, replace the meter heads on it. It was a pretty fast and efficient uh, process that they were able to get in and get out of there. Um, <clears throat> I've actually completed the Michigan Infrastructure Council Asset uh, Management Champion Program. That's a, a mouthful. Um, a manager Kankas had also completed that a couple years ago, so or a couple month, a couple weeks ago. Um, I was a couple weeks behind him, but it was a it, it's a very good pro, uh, program. It's long and intensive, uh, but I did learn a lot that I believe that I will be able to uh, kind of bring into our asset management programs as we're going forward. Um, for the spring cycle, I have nominated two of our workers, uh, a service worker and the water operator, uh, to actually actually take this program as well. Uh, so the more people that we can get in uh, into this program with knowledge, it's going to make all of our jobs easier here as we move forward with our programs. <clears throat> uh, building your grounds. Um, the staff has been keeping the parking lots and the sidewalks clean. I'm sure they're going to have a lot of work here to do in the next couple days. Uh, but whenever they've been, you know, the snow has been coming down, they've been able to keep up on and keep everything clean. Uh, a couple weeks ago, we attempted to make ice at the rink and then it got warm on us, so that kind of didn't happen. Uh, but in the last couple days, we've been able to get out there and start making some ice. So I know I had a few phone calls about that here this week. We are currently out there flooding and hopefully we'll have this up and running here. Um, I'm hoping by next week, we'll see what happens with the snow and uh, how many times we can flood it, but the, the weather should be conducive for it. And uh, finally, the, the rink building retrofit is actually complete. So we actually got a video from Andy that kind of detailed everything that he did. So it's done and uh, so we'll be ready to go when the ice season opens here. And that's all I have. Great. Questions for Lenny? Okay. Thanks for staying awake for us. We appreciate it. No, no, no problem. Thank you. You bet. Roger, what do you want to share? Well, compared to last month, which was especially intense, this will be kind of short and boring. Um, but um, had a, a lot of questions, work on getting the 425 agreement ready to be considered and just answering questions surrounding that. Had a, we've had a number of questions relating to the board's parliamentary procedures that um, um, may be a further topic. Um, down the road. As this board will recall, um, the Marquette Township Board has never formally adopted Robert's Rules of Procedure, but has always used them as a guide. And I know that that's been the case for at least 30 years, because the 30-year anniversary of when I came on board for this job is happening January 1st. And that's what I was informed by then-Supervisor 
Max Muley and uh, clerk uh, Kathy Phil, or Musulf. Phil first, she got remarried. But in any event, um, the reason for that is very logical, and I won't bore you with a lot of detail on that, but it's uh, the parliamentary procedure is important to maintain order and to be conducive to public involvement and participation, but it's not to be used as a sword or as a weapon. And if questions come up, I'll be happy to address those when or if they come up. Um, but I'm making no recommendation for a change in that procedure, but to simply use Robert's Rules of Order as a guide, and this board has been um, pretty faithful in adhering to them as a guide, but it does not then require a special motion to suspend Robert's Rules of Order if we want to allow dialogue with someone uh, who's here on a presentation or things of, of that nature. Um, we also addressed uh, a number of questions relating to water and sewer, well, liens for delinquent water and sewer charges that come up. And sometimes, even if a lien exists, it can be extinguished if there's a tax foreclosure. For example, if someone lets their property taxes go unpaid for three years, depending on which statute the lien was entered under and the procedure followed, the lien may be collected or it may not. So we just had some questions on how that works because thankfully that's not been a huge issue in, in this township. Uh, the residents have typically paid their bills when due or at least paid them eventually. Um, I had a little bit of time to move the Lost Creek forward matter forward a little bit further. I had thought there was going to be a case from the Michigan Court of Appeals that I was sort of waiting for that might shed some light on payments in lieu of taxes, and it turned out that it didn't really address the issue that I thought it might. Um, and we're also, I, I am cautiously optimistic that we may be able to resolve the Westwood Mall Tax Tribunal appeal. Um, I reached out, there's a new attorney that is representing them, and it was kind of beyond me what's at dispute anymore. There was a problem with the county assessment records in which our last settlement, for whatever reason, was not entered on the assessment roll. Um, so that when the new tax bills came out, it was as if that prior tax tribunal appeal never happened. Um, that has been corrected. And um, I'm waiting to hear whether that resolves the issue or not. Um, I, in, from my perspective, I don't see that there's anything else at issue. And in fairness, they pretty much had to file that appeal because it was an assessment that was incorrect. It wasn't our doing of making it incorrect, but it was nonetheless an incorrect assessment, and I'm hoping that goes away with no more uh, time or expense. And that pretty much, I'm probably overlooking something that crossed my desk, but that's the majority of it in the past month. They did it anyway. Anything for Roger? Okay, thank you, sir. Any public comment? You've been waiting a while. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, my name is Alyssa Arwood. I'm with Longyear. And I just want to say thank you um, for the 425. And we appreciate the uh, next step in the process of being able to get our plans in front of you um, in early of 2023. So thank you very much. We appreciate the opportunity. And we appreciate the, uh, you know, regional kind of spirit of everyone working together. So, yeah, thank you very much. Great. Thank, thank you. you. Thanks for coming. Yes, of course. Anybody else? Okay, any announcements, gang? Looking to share? Manager's report. I, I think this is the third time this year you did not get a written report. I hope you'll forget that by the time my annual review comes around sometime <laughs> next year. I apologize for that. I, I just want to say we were actually entering a meeting with our bargaining units 
last Thursday afternoon as the clerk entered and said it's time to finish the packets and he didn't have my written report because it wasn't done yet. Needless to say, I had several people waiting for me and the supervisor waiting for a phone call to be on speakerphone so we could dis initiate this health insurance renewal uh, discussion and you didn't get a written report, I apologize, but uh, as you can see by the agenda, there's been plenty going on. I want to take a couple of minutes to discuss the Christmas tree this year. You all know what happened. There were liability concerns with that big tree. We had a plan to create an artificial tree that just couldn't be executed in time for this year. So we had a generous donation of a 10 foot tree from Meister's Tree Farm that we used for our tree lighting so we could still have a ceremony. That's not good enough for some people. <laughs> I'm sorry, but we had a tree lighting. We had a great ceremony. If you were at the event, it was excellent. It was. We had outgoing members of the events committee who are volunteers that put this on, by the way. For those that are out there criticizing, we had a member in our audience saying, I stepped up because everyone wants to complain and do nothing. Now is their chance. We have a special meeting coming up to discuss events. If you're not happy with the Christmas tree this year, step up. That's all I have to say. By the way, that Christmas tree had to go to Public Works because it developed a tilt. It had water in the base that froze. <laughs> it, it's a little bit of a calamity of errors, I, I admit. But People should have a little bit more res respect when they're doing their warrioring from the keyboard. Anything else you want to add besides the tree? <laughs> <laughs> Just want to make sure. Merry Christmas. <laughs> okay, you want to review all of our motions? Not as many as last time. Okay, the first motion was to approve the consent agenda as presented. That was approved. Second motion was to approve the regular agenda, and that was present and that was approved. The third motion was to hire Andre Brown as our on-call firefighter, probationary, and that was approved. Uh, the fourth motion was to approve the supervisor committee recommendations for 2023, that was approved. The fifth motion was to schedule a special meeting to discuss township events on 116.23 at 3.30. That was approved. Sixth motion was to approve an ad hoc committee uh, to discuss establishing a township police department. That committee includes Manager Kangas, Trustee Winslow, and Trustee Everson, and that was approved. Um, seventh motion was to move the renewal of the municipal risk insurance policy and renewal of the health insurance policy and a year-end budget amendment to a special meeting on 12 28 22 at 1 30 p.m and that was approved the eighth motion was to approve the proposal for financial <laughs> audit services and that was approved the ninth motion was to approve the driveway driveway approach repair for 16 thousand two hundred dollars and that was approved tenth motion was to accept the uh, van overloop donation and that was approved in the eleventh motion was to approve the 428 425 agreement with the city of marquette and authorize the township clerk and supervisor to authorize that agreement after the city of marquette uh, contingent on the city of marquette approval after thirty days and that was approved. Business. I don't have anything right now for the next agenda. Go ahead, Randy. Only thing I do have for comment is the days will get longer starting tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> You're here. So, what other comments? Close it up. Carl, welcome. We're thrilled that you're going to be with us for the next couple of years. Thank you. Appreciate you stepping up and not sitting in the audience and just, you know, doing your thing. Did we overwhelm tonight already? Mm -hmm. Not yet. <laughs>
Linda. Um, so I just want to do the Planning Commission report. Um, yes. Just because we had two public hearings, and one was for a proposed solar energy system on a property at 200 Eagle Nest Road, and we did approve that. And the other was a public hearing um, on a proposed tiny home land use on a property located at 99 Morgan Meadows, and we also approved that. The other thing that we did that should, will be of interest to this group is that we um, reviewed the climate resolution that was presented to us, and we approved that to come forward, so you'll be seeing that climate resolution to review for support from this board. So I think, Lynn, that'll probably be on your next agenda, or maybe the one after that. Okay. okay um, and that was pretty much it. Remember January 4th, it's 5.30, <laughs> Wednesday. Go ahead, Ernie. A couple things. As, uh, I attended the Township Business Association meeting today as our representative, and there was quite a bit of discussion on the events in oh. the Township, and I'll bring up all those that discussion when we have our meeting in that, too. So it was positive in that. They're trying to think of how they can help in that and how the members can help. So I'll bring that up further at our meeting. I think the last thing I have is Merry Christmas to all and enjoy yourself and get your snow Absolutely. shovels out for the next couple yeah. of days. Merry Christmas. Ben? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion we adjourn. Oh, <laughs> well I need to make one comment before that is um, since we moved our meetings to Wednesday, I'm still needing going to need from the Roads Committee and the Recreation Committee if they still want to meet on a Tuesday or a Wednesday. It doesn't, it's not going to affect our meetings, but when I do my meeting schedule, I'd like to not be wrong on that. So um, just I'll have to have the planner let me know if, if they want to keep their meetings on the same day or they want to move it to, up because we've moved our meetings to 530. So hence their meetings would have to be earlier. So let me know and I'll support your adjournment motion. <laughs> All in favor? We're not going to support Opposed? Thank you. We are adjourned at 823. Thanks, everybody.